there's nothing out there like this at the moment. First time I ever went fishing uh, was on the River Hull and I think my dad was at a bit of a loose end, didn't know what to do with us so I said oh come on I'll take you fishing so we ended up on the River Hull and I don't think I actually caught anything, I, I don't think I, I really knew what I was doing, my dad didn't particularly know what he was doing either so uh, it was just a, a boy's adventure really, me, my brother and my dad. I think I caught anything the first few trips when we actually went out, but uh, kind of the bug bit me really, and uh, I've been fishing ever since. Match fishing is, is basically there's a group of anglers, and um, they'll all fish a, a certain allotted time, so whether that's five hours or six hours, uh, start at the whistle, end at the whistle, and then at the end of the five or six hours, um, all the fish that an angler has caught or then weighed, obviously during the match, then whatever fish the angler catches, they're all placed in a keep net. And then the one at the end of the match that's got the biggest weight of fish is called the winner, he usually picks up the prize money. I'm what they call a, a club fisherman really, the prize money probably isn't as important as the crowing rate, so at the end of the match, you know, it's, it's more about the banter than it is actually the money, and it's, it's more kind of the enjoyment and, um, Really, I, I think what we win doesn't tend to cover the amount of bait and travelling expenses. I actually came up with this idea while I was fishing a match at Lamworth Lakes in Albury, East Yorkshire. And it was one of those days, it was it was a sunny day, but being quite close to the coast, it, it was windy as well. And uh, I wasn't particularly doing any good, but running down the centre of the lake is this rope probably about 30 metres out, something like that. And I could see all the carp near the central rope. Um, and they weren't interested in the feed there. Uh, so basically I ended up fishing a pellet waggler. But because it was so far away and it was windy, when I happened to be uh, catapulting my pellets out, they were just going all over. And uh, I couldn't actually concentrate the fish enough to do any good and to catch many fish. And kind of at the end of the day, um, I weighed in, I think I only had a couple of fish, but I couldn't get over this, you know, this inability to catch the fish, to be able to concentrate them at distance, you know, and fish that, whatever bait that I wanted to at distance as well. So I had a, a couple of sleepless nights, and then um, I started tinkering about in my garage here. And uh, eventually I came up with what I thought was a, a good working idea, which would enable me to to fish at distance and be really accurate with what I was feeding. And that was when the soda float was born. Um, and it was a ping pong ball, I think, originally, and um, a shampoo bottle. I found a bit of polystyrene and a knitting needle, and we kind of knocked something together then. But although it was very crude, and it was sort of based around this, is this is kind of like the, the Mark II prototype. Um, so the ping pong ball's been replaced and um, the knitting needle got replaced with a section of kite uh, and then I think we found a, a slightly better shampoo bottle but this is essentially how it all started. What I wanted to do was, was make it a home based business for me and my family. Um, so I wanted to try and take as much work out of it as possible so we've kind of got a, um, a design now that just clips together and uh, so it's, it's very easy in terms of its assembly um, and also there was quite a bit of research along the way so there was quite a bit of um, 3D printing and you know going back to the drawing boards so I, I don't know what revision we're on now but we're quite a long way down the line now.
wherever I've shown it to fishermen and sort of people within the trade, everybody's been quite positive about it. I've used this uh, in winter, I've used it for fishing for silvers as well, because it's even though it's quite a large float, it's quite sensitive. So you can use it for fishing smaller baits and castor and hemp and things like that. What I'd really like to do is, is probably make a range of sizes, so there'll definitely be a smaller one for um, kind of smaller rods. I think it's probably as, as big as we need it, but what I tried to do with this one is make it as general as I could. So if you wanted to fish an 8mm pellet with it or you want to fish sweet corn with it, you can actually do it with just the one float, but that kind of shouldn't limit its uses really and I can see possibly uh, benefits to a sea angler fishing from the rocks or you know maybe somebody will pack it in the holiday suitcase you know and they're fishing worm in Spain or somewhere like that. <laughs>